Ah, well, we now have audio, folks. We've been <laughs> surmounting technical challenges here at UK Nationals as I'll put up a bit of a sky ball looking for glass ball towards the end zone. But there's a last minute little bounce from Keown that is going to bobble the disc away and retain possession for Oxford. Thus far, the score is 1 0 to Smog 2. Who will now try and get themselves another opportunity. Squeezing on that far sideline. There's a big old poach to exploit, and it is indeed found by a racy backhand. Can she catch up? Just trots it a little bit. Emma Holden underneath it had so much room. And I think there was an opportunity to make a play on that disc cap. Yeah, absolutely. It, it almost felt like that disc was couldn't have been any more perfect. It hung really nicely. Um, and it maybe the player just couldn't couldn't catch up to it quite in time. Um, but it does give Smog another opportunity on offense. Well, maybe lacking a little bit in belief there. Of course, it's an absolute delight to have Kat Cheng on the mic. Oh, are we calling you your maiden or your married name now? Maid What's maiden in Frisbee, married outside of. <laughs> well, of course. We know Kat Cheng is the uh, the household name of Ultimate Frisbee, but you know, coming onto the microphones for your first time, it's lovely to have you. Of course, I'm Hannah Pendlebury, and we are delighted to bring you this game as Smog 2 go off to the races. Loads of momentum on that throw, and a nice grab underneath the easy stuff for Declan Isles. Now, Glenn So seeking options. Anderson just up line, there's a sneaky poach off, but I think perhaps a strip called no going to be the turnover great spirit there from Anderson yeah gave it some thought could have been some contact but it's really nice that players are able to just take that second think about it and decide if they do want to call it or if if not and let play resume well, I like the spacing from Carr just sort of dominating that channel in front of the disc saying nope if you want to come and get the disc you're going to have to go through me and that's not allowed of course because it's ultimate famously non-contact sport <laughs> here would you go on the far sideline. Loves those inside flicks, he does. Gaten now, a little gallop for the jump up catch. Ella Curtis, starting to rise on the stool count, but it's just a quick reset backwards. Car now, has the underneath option this time, Holden connects. Happy to play a little bit softer defense around the handler set. Oh, I love that one into the space. The lead inside break. Denalik in plenty of room, but the, just can't quite get around the mark of glass pool. Here you go. Going for a high backhand over the mark. Gaten throws it into the front corner and it's the run down from how you go. It took a while to finish that point and our first multiple turnovers after that quick initial score from Smog 2. But Kat, what do you think about this Oxford offense? It seemed really patient, calm. They didn't seem flustered by, you know, the tight match defense that Smog 2 were applying, um, but they were able to work it round through their players. Yes, use their handler resets when needed um, and use more of the players on their roster um, to convert that score. So nice to see um, the offensive flow from Oxford there. Yeah, it has to be said, they did make them work very hard for it. When how'd you go kind of finally got that score in, sort of took a little moment on the sideline to put his hands on his knees <laughs> and take a long gulp of breath. But how'd you go, Keown and uh, Carr, Gaten, uh, more of the players moving that disc around, but they all look really comfortable on the disc. It's nice to see. And then oh, that's what you expect. And it's wonderful, of course, to have not just Div 1 Nationals, but Div 2 Nationals this season, just showing the the growth and development of the sport in the UK. Yeah, absolutely. So the Open Division 2 uh, is down at what is formerly known as uh, Riverside, or uh, for those that are long-time players, Grow Farm. Uh, Wind Farm, I guess, as other people know it. So it um, be good to see how, how that side of the tournament pans out. Absolutely. Oh, what a lovely, luscious layout grab from Laura Murray. Nearly requires the same from Blount. Connor Hill being very well poached off, but Tobia Trivich catches up. 
Nice to see Carlo back on the field. And he's going to run all the way to the deep space. There's a little bit of potential from the defense. But Carlo Connor-Hill closes the door. There's a little foul call, which is immediately accepted by the fellow number 50, Melissa Webby. But you've got to love a bit of proper mixed. Absolutely. And even that the male matching player that was on Carlo Connor-Hill uh, didn't quite keep up. The, the female matching player who was deep uh, decided to help out. Well, an uncontested foul will give goal line possession for Connor Hill. Oh, just a cheeky dink back immediately. Ackley has room and is pushed past to find her. Not too much movement. And they're sort of getting in each other's way almost. And that's going to be taken away. Fantastic bid. Hamza Alawi, Alawi, sorry. What a play, what a play to really uh, get in front of Carlo Connor Hill, get a make a play on that disc, um, which gives Oxford the full pitch to work with, uh, but showing, you know, from what we've seen so far from them, they're patient, they're calm. Let's hopefully uh, see what they could do this time. Well, this is now both teams that have had a look at a break in this game, very early stages. Only 11 minutes expired on the game clock, or thereabouts. Of course, these are proper full-size games in the mixed and open divisions. Yep, an hour and 20 minutes, games to 15. Whereas the women's division is sh slightly shorter, 50-minute games to 13 points. Indeed, reflecting the difference in size, just 10 teams. Another season where we didn't quite get enough competing to uh, have women's regionals, but of course, that will hopefully change in future, but that's going to have a little bit too much juice on it, trying to connect with Rachel Hawes on the near sideline. Nice look, though, just slightly overshot, but it's great to see that Oxford have those deep looks in their game. So the response underneath eventually found. Squeezing it up line. Tobia Chinovich, though, is able to take the aggressive option doesn't have to worry about catching the frisbee and does a great job of denying alex arkel second layout block of the point as well we had uh, what um we had the one earlier by the uh, end zone that smog were attacking in and we've had one in the midfield so it shows oxford are really willing to put their bodies on the line Absolutely. Well, it's the second time they're coming out on defence. Tobiacevic putting an ambitious blade out to Denalek, who misses it by a hair, but that had a lot of mustard on it. Yeah, it was a really, really nice uh, IO flick, uh, and it had a lovely trajectory and just past the hands of Denalek. She'll, uh, she'll be gutted to have missed that one. That's a diff high difficulty rating on the execution there, though. Yeah. But great look and way to use the break side of the pitch. I think that's something that Oxford have been doing very well mm. so far in the early stages, is hitting those break throws, whether in the near side or the deep space on the pitch. Another slightly slow start for Smog. Good poaching off from the defenders, causing some confusion. A little pop through to Ackley. Oh, that's a very high release, and it's going to escape the claws of George Gigi Morrison course a fellow commentator and ulti tv crew member nice slide move from brooks throws a very high one into the end zone but it's going to be snaffled up just before the back line and we can't quite call it bookends for hamza alway but that was a really well read disc indeed mm. didn't need to put his body on the line that time but he made sure he went up early had the position the defender couldn't get near him uh, and made certain that the point went to oxford well, our first break of the game does come in the third point. But I tell you what, this is a real scrappy affair, Kat. At the moment, we've had two, two points where six and then five turnovers total. Do you think it's maybe just a little bit of first game jitters? It could be. They're, they're both on the stream. And something I know um, it's possible that these teams might be less familiar um, than particularly for Smog and their uh, Smog 1 counterparts. But... First uh, first game at Nationals, everyone's a little bit nervous, trying out things, um, and hopefully they'll relax and build into the games as the tournament progresses. Well, having played regional qualifiers yourself, 
Did you, did you play Reach? Well, you're, you're... Okay, well, fair enough then, Kat. I assumed you were because you're also playing this tournament. You'll be appearing with Flight Mixed. I will indeed. Debut well, for that as well. So what, what were, what were the, the, the inside track then on regionals coming through? Uh, so Flight were in the Northern Regions. Uh, they finished... Um, sixth uh, so initially weren't actually offered the spot but um, because there were it's easier to have a tournament when there's 12 teams they were offered um, another spot to play uh, and it will be um, exciting to see how they get on I know that they're hoping to improve on seed um, but as we can see Oxford are now back on offense indeed well they'll be looking to try and improve their seed as well of course the pool a does have two smog opponents and so it'll be a very familiar system that Oxford will be playing against for their second match of today but of course they currently sat, sit in 10th seed do Oxford and uh, tipped as a potential team to go through I've certainly having played against them myself last season they really do have some very difficult players to match up with but they squander the opportunity and it's going to be a big bomb to start off the possession and it will pay off a beautiful disc out of the hands of Carlo Connor Hill. And finding, is that James Blount in the end zone? Yes, yes it was. Haven't seen the other number two, Alex Mazen, take to the pitch yet. Uh, yeah, he does seem to be firmly uh, layered up. I'm not sure if he's going to be playing this match. But we know he brings a considerable amount of coaching experience, having recently been part of that contingent that led uh, the GB women's team to their silver medal in the European Ultimate Championships last month. And it's wonderful to see, of course, GB women back on the podium for the first time in about a decade at the European Championship level. Is it that long? Wow. But great performances. It was great that we were able to observe so much of it. I certainly did from home uh, across all the divisions. It was really nice to see our, our GB team's performances. Well, it was a slight change of fortune for the GB programmes at large, of course, because it was the first time in history that we'd seen for the European Championships of not a gold medal for GB mix. So, you know, you win some, you lose some, you gain some yards, you concede some yards, but it just goes to show some of the uh, hot competition that's coming out from some of the other yeah. compatriots. And, of course, as well as defending who will... Oh, I'll tell you what. Hold on. Stop. That was an amazing snatch. <laughs> Absolutely huge grab yeah. for George Gaten over the shoulder of the defender, followed up by one for Hjelgo inside to Keown. Options available. Dunalek striding towards the back corner, goes for the bib but just runs out of room. And that disc was put right into the space but just had that trailing edge and fortunately died away from Dunalek at the last minute. She did all that she could to try and save possession um, but we hope that she will have a successful bid soon. Yeah, she's been asked a lot of uh, very difficult questions, especially in the end zone. That's the second one that we've seen sort of just fly past her. And she's no slouch, a real committed athlete. So to try and overshoot her, it's uh, quite the thing. But this well, action roll there for Albert Hart on the far sideline. High release again. <laughs> been quite a few moments when Smog have gotten out of jail with just releasing over the shoulder of the mark. Lovely up stride to the far sideline. Sadira. Pops it through in front. Oh, bit of a bump there. But no foul called. No. Happy to play through it. Torn hats all there. Or torn, sorry. He's got some of the most impressive quads in all of UK Ultimate. Foul between the resets, uh, accepted foul by Sadira on How'd You Go? Oxford struggling to find too many options. Keown has to come back all the way to the bank. Matched up with Isles. Just a soft one over the top to Danalek. Into Hatzel. 
Oh, that's a lot of traffic. I thought that had left Thorne's hand. Again, Joan being asked, but that one sails way too far. And I think Jeremy very cognizant that that one was not gettable. And somehow Declan Isles ended up on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he just caught the uh, caught the back of Joan's ankle. Yeah. Great. It's a soft one out into the space. Ooh. Bit of a spin move there. Absolutely. <laughs> that one I got an absolute laser. I mean, I, lo I love the attack from Albert Hart trying to redeem that one, but he was definitely not anywhere near in bounds. Yeah, he didn't give up on that disc. That's the second layout. Uh, of the game but unfortunately that one uh, out of bounds so will not be a score on this occasion it's a great d-line attitude though absolutely Here's getting us underway but that's going to require redemption and doesn't quite manage it has a go does ella curtis Mog looking to give, go it all the way. That's a beautiful inside shot and a little fist bump to celebrate from Holly Gray. And a dance. Oh, the moves of the number 16 for Smog 2. Ollie Gray getting that lovely assist and celebrating in style. I don't, if you notice, Hanny, did you notice um, George Gayton's height on that bid on the attempt when he came under for the 3-4? He slashed under. Huge bid like chest height uh, unfortunately was unsuccessful but we know that Gayton is a player uh, to make those incredible bids hailing from the University of Nottingham so uh, familiar with this area and these pitches or well, perhaps a bit of a home turf advantage to, to be extended but that will pop us back to the original advantage from the toss 3-2 to Smog 2 over Oxford Ultimate of course this is Pool A the initial pool stages in the mixed division and then you go to kind of your crossovers 12 teams of course it's a relatively easy schedule to write not too quirky but yeah four pools of three so you've got smog one two and oxford in pool a reading thundering herd and nemesis pool b deep space bn1 and flight mixed in pool c and then lemmings glasgow mixed and zoo to finish us off and there, and there are uh, Lemmings and Reading already have spots uh, at Euros and there are three remaining bids in the mixed division. So uh, it's anyone's game. We'll see who ends up in those top three positions tomorrow. Indeed. A real uh, UK heavy affair it will be in Poland, in Wrocław, later on this year. Because, of course, it's not just about who's the best in the UK. It's about, as you say, Kat, who will go to EUCF later on this season. Car near to the goal line after a good gainer. Kieran trying to go all the way around, but it's going to be taken away. The disc snaffled up by Ollie Gray, and he rips open a backhand. It's going to sit for quite some time, but another grab underneath it. Really great read from Ed Simpson, who puts it into the end zone. And there we go, folks. What a way to take two in a row, break-wise, and three on the bounce for Smog 2. 4-2 now the score. Yeah, really nice to see Oxford utilising more of that deep game. Uh, successfully came down in the hands of Carr. Um, and then Smog answering back with exactly the same, um, but in being able to convert. So, And timeout has just been called, I believe, by... Oh, I don't know, actually. Timeout well, has seems, been called. It seems to have been called out, called by Smog too. Okay. Interestingly, having despite having gone three on the bounce... They take the time out, if anything, maybe to rest some legs. But uh, it's an interesting time in terms of this, this game. Because obviously, I think what what Smog 2 have been really doing well on defense, Cat is applying pressure to the resets. There have been a lot of high stall count ones. The reason that turnover, of course, happened was because of the pressure being put on Carr to try and find sort of just that easy reset. I think possibly you could have said, maybe just have a go, pop it into the end zone, you know. Joe Cole, why not? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that pressure that Smog have been um, applying, as you say, Hanny, has just been consistent. It's been making uh, Oxford, rather than taking the resets, they're having to look more downfield, take those uh, narrower channel shots, which is when Smog are more likely to make a play uh, and get that turnover.
Well, Smog 2 in ideal position. I'm sure they're not thinking it's too ideal, though, to go and have to play against their first team. Of course, that's just the way the seedings have fallen out, of course. Smog looking to defend their title. On a certain podcast, a certain pundit might have said, Kat, that uh, they thought this was perhaps an open field in a couple of the divisions for their defending champions. Of course... I think there's one division where things might be a little bit sealed up mm, oh. after having gotten so many back-to-back -back national championships for Clapham. Yes, whereas I think the women's division, it could be anybody's game. Uh, we know Gravity have already uh, got a spot at Euros, uh, but the rest of the teams in that division are all high contenders. Um, if the women's non-regional event, but the Reading... Uh, event is anything to the rating or August edition sorry is anything to go by could be anybody's game absolutely and here in the in the mixed division of course it's smog one that will be defending their title I don't see their second team quite uh, unsaddling them but stranger things have happened and it is a real strong pack this year of course we're expecting the rightly first not first seeder sorry really high seed in Reading ultimate team to do pretty well because they are flush with extra hands this season but of course, underperformed last year here in Nottingham. Here you go, centre field. That's Torn looking around the backfield, and again, Smog doing such a great job of shutting down all of the backfield options, and Anderson just shepherding the disc into the turf. Yeah, Oxford looked a little bit flustered there. They kind of ran out of options. Um, obviously, made eyes with Gayton through through the flick, um, but Anderson was there to make sure to deny him that space. A real team D effort, as you might say. I'd like to see Oxford maybe bring people all the way through from the backfield, kind of exploit some of the poaching that's going on with this Mog 2 side. Nice redemption from behind from Declan Isles. He's going to put one out on a string. Oh, and the little celebration before for Albert Hart. And those throws from Smog there, just nice in front of the player. Time to read. Um, Oxford defence not quite in the hot pursuit that we've seen earlier in the game, um, but it meant Smog can make absolutely sure and capitalise. Well, experience there being shown by Declan Isles, of course, has been playing for well over a decade as Deck. I, th I think possibly even half of his lifetime, <laughs> some might say. I, th I think that could, could well be accurate. He's uh, nearly Masters eligible, but not quite, if I understand my maths correctly. But if you, uh, if you ask a sometime ultimate commentator, Ian Tate, he's a very old man. <laughs> Mm. Couldn't, couldn't possibly reveal his age. That might be very similar to certain other commentators. But he's still playing. We love to see him. Uh, we sometimes have seen him on the sideline of events doing more of the medical and physio support. Um, so it's great to see him back on the pitch. Uh, I know he hails from Mighty Hux, uh, is you know the other team that he, he plays for quite regularly. So it's Indeed. good to see him playing uh, in a mixed division and on a more regular uh, turn. Indeed, he was at the uh, European Beach Ultimate Club Championships earlier on this season. I have to say, he uh, he seems to have a better time of his movement on grass than sand, but that is also accurate for most athletes. Very few people are particularly good at running on that uh, difficult surface. Of course, as uh, I think it's Ben Rolfe, who plays for BM1 at this tournament, once said, the key to running on sand is not to touch the sand. But... Looking to get lots of touches here are Oxford Ultimate, who've been shut down very handedly by Smog 2's defence. The squeeze on the far sideline just about toes it in. Balletic stuff. Now through. Fours puts one up into the end zone, but that is going to escape the intended target. Trying to get another assist to Hamza Aloe. Oxford utilising that sideline, um, didn't actually need to look at the reset. There were quite a lot of quick, uh, quick movements there. Um, but the final throw just over the head of Hamza Alloway. Yeah, I want to give a second shout out though to the footwork from Rachel Hawes on that far sideline, being squeezed and pinned by Gigi Morrison. Big old poach off on the reset, but looks a little bit too late. That is smart defensive adjustments from Wayne House. But there's going to be a deep shot. Ambitious play underneath it, but just about spooks. 
but the Sadira. The hang there from the defender um, really, really put the pressure on on Sadira to to go up and actually misread the disc. I have to say, I'm surprised to see that that the the luscious locks of the number 33 belong to Ben Wainhouse. I haven't seen it since he's grown his hair out. Foul off the disc. The push off foul. So play will go back. And Gigi. Ollie. Gigi Morrison hanging out deep in the on this sideline. She's uh, leaving her player quite poached, um, but to help out with the defence. So we'll see if Oxford can recognise that. It's relatively low wind conditions, mm. so you can really get away with that when it's uh, hairy, scary weather-wise, but it is still a very difficult shot to hit. Although Wayne House probably has that in his toolbox. Wayne House, a big contingent from MCP team went to a Euro Masters in Ireland last summer. Oh, that one's just going to tip off the hands of Rachel Halls, but she just about recovers it. Well, I'll tell you what, that's the second excellent aerial effort on the far sideline for her. Halls to Brooks, who just about gets the hand underneath for the scoop. Hamilton. Seeking opportunities. Wayne House in the central position. Has the receiver going deep. Didn't quite have the separation. Glasspool not able to get there, though. Perhaps being a little bit more conservative. Hawes now looking for a reset. Smog have generated turnovers in this section before, and it's going to be a second one as Wayne House tries to make a hero out of himself on the far corner. Yeah, made the catch up from throwing the hook uh, to his player earlier, um, but just out of the out of reach of his bidding hands. Glass ball with a rather casual dish into the centre for Grape. The wind-up comes, and as does the disc. It's great defensive read, just shy of the goal for Sadira. Oh, the touch on that disc that's just about held on to. There were so many catches on the edge of the fingertips. Isabel Ritu with the goal. Yeah, from our perspective, it didn't. We didn't. I wasn't sure if the disc was actually going to die away from her, but she made sure, despite the defensive pressure, uh, and that throw was ideal for her just to get that catch. Scooped it up, made sure, and Smog rush on to celebrate with her. Well, what a difference a couple of points makes. We had th four breaks in a row. That's five on the bounce for Smog too after conceding that first break of this game. But they have made such fast work of it, has the Smog 2 defensive line. And clearly, that timeout that they took did nothing to interrupt their momentum. But we are going to see a timeout being called by Oxford. So we're going to have a little brief break, though, folks. Don't go anywhere, though. Can Oxford Ultimate bring it back, trailing 6-2 to Smog 2? on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. Not quite half time yet here at UK Nationals. Our first game of our live stream day and it's Smog 2 charging away. Even though they've got balls on their shirts, they're going to have to find a red rag. Our Oxford Ultimate 6-2, the current score for the second team of the North. 
And they've got an interesting bucket, have this Oxford Ultimate Sidecap. Yeah, we uh, we noticed it in the timeout. Um, it's it's a red bucket and it has a picture of a bull on it, but it also has um, what I am can only guess from up here um, is the team's names on it. So actually, um, it's got everybody's water bottles and they bring it in so that everybody's things are together and they can focus on the chat that's going on in that timeout circle. Well, Smog 2 sitting pretty. They've been putting all kinds of pressure on in the handler reset space. There's been some amazing catches made by the Oxford players. They just haven't had the success that they've needed to. Those five points on the bounce to take us all the way to 6-2 here. So this a must hold situation to keep themselves within contention. Danalek winds up a big old backhand, but that's gonna, just gonna topple out of the sideline. Takes the visor and throws that off the field instead. Yeah, those same channel uh, throws with the player disc and uh, the thrower are all in the same channel is uh, those are the harder ones uh, to execute and um, the Oxford player um, Holden did what she could but uh, the disc um, sadly trailed out of bounds before she could make a play yeah a little bit of a trust ball as well Anderson was definitely on the back shoulder so sort of just making sure I say the back shoulder deep of the player just making sure that that one was never going to happen Arles shoots at the far sideline. There's a little bit of traffic, but he knew he was throwing to. Now it's Hart. Arles taking his time, trying to just dance away. It's a high release, but had enough space just to escape Kyo. Pick up field. Players just getting tangled. They reset themselves position-wise and it's checked back in by Keown. Yeah, it has been a pretty, considering how tight the defense has been, Kat, a pretty uh, pick-free game up until this point. Oh, that's a really nice option. It's a bit of hospital pass, though, and ascending up to make the grab another one for George Gayton. But that's very loose. Trying to just release into the deep space, and it is shepherded into the dirt by Denise Boone. Yeah, both teams looking to play a bit of sky ball there. Uh, well, and a second one as well. Arles getting the nod from the handle space. Oh, that would have been naughty to try and pass around your own back. But in the end, it's just a very simple flick into the path of Tiffany Anderson. And 7-2 now the scoreline. Another break for Smog. And something that was really standing out to me in this game, Cat. For Smog 2, they have one player alone who up until this point had had two stats. Now, of course, Declan Isles will join with two assists. But the distribution across the board for Smog 2 is very, very impressive. Yeah, you could say the same for Oxford as well. They've, had, uh, they've definitely had players, four, five, six players getting blocks. Um, looking at the assists and goals that they've had too. So they are utilising the full depth of their roster. Well, it's it's difficult to uh, to have well spread. I'll tell you what, newsflash folks, Alex Mazin has entered the game. He's just taken off, he's just taken off some layers. <laughs> and he's actually, is he actually gonna get on the pitch? He's getting on the pitch. Fantastic. Yeah, the hat's off as well, re revealing that barnet. <laughs> is it? Is it a, a fresh lid? I don't know. <laughs> it's very hat hairy right now, <laughs> but it's all right. Just did you know? I'm sure the the aerodynamic flow will uh, will settle any stray strands <laughs> of follicles. So of course, using the proper gender ratio pulls, that one is going to go a little bit out of bounds, but a nice interesting shape on it there a gift given by Lara Murray and Wayne House will have to contend with the rangy force of Alex Mazen he's got quite the wingspan has Maz and they're going to need it because that came out of bounds very very quickly indeed I think to be honest possibly just almost straight on the goal line 
the sideline indicating otherwise. Wayne House takes off the easy reset to Brooks. That one's a bit flat, but soaring through this guy to collect it. It's Hamilton. Things looking a little bit static upfield. Timing not quite on. Oh, a little clutter on the back heel. Uncontested foul. Yeah, immediately apologised from Sidira. I recognise that straight away. Yeah, completely unintentional. I mean, to be fair, it was a hotly contested battle. <laughs> I'm not sure who would have come out with a disc if there hadn't been that little clip of the back heel. Thankfully, all was totally fine. And both players agree. Again, Smog are doing a great job of just really pressuring things with tight person coverage. Forcing that big old around to Wayne House. Streaking up line. Oh, that's got a lot of loft on it, but it can it be amazing footwork again? It is indeed. And a long last. Oxford Ultimate stem the flow. 7 3 now with that great grab from Rachel Hawes. Yeah, Oxford did a really nice job of swinging, containing, looking downfield and taking that option uh, when it was there. Obviously, Rachel Hawes caught that right at the back of the end zone. She didn't give up on that disc and made sure with her twinkle toes that she was in bounds. So Oxford back on the board now. Yeah, it's been a little while of waiting, though. They're going to have quite the uh, comeback required in the second half, of course. Being here at UK Nationals is no mean feat and certainly 10th in the UK is a very respectable finishing position if they can't do anything about their initial seeding but they do look to be rather shut out in this game and one thinks if this is your second team for smog it's unlikely on paper <laughs> that they're going to see a win in pool stages for Oxford Ultimate but it ain't over till it's over folks we've seen stranger things on an ultimate field absolutely we have Melissa Webby with the pull. A big shout out to uh, our live chat. If you're enjoying this game, please feel free to, to jump in that. Catherine Evans, clearly an Oxford Ultimate fan. Not sure who you're supporting, Isaac Hart, but a uh, pleasure to have you alongside us, of course. If you enjoy our live streams, do you consider becoming a patron of Ultimate Coverage? Patreon.com slash TV. Rock stars need money, as do broadcasters. Unfortunately, those of us that have this as our away, current only away, job away, away. do also have to pay to eat. My central position, moving round underneath. Oh, cod. It's a huge grab in the center. Murray puts up. up into the space, and there is a collection, a little collision. Tobiachevich sort of throwing his hands in the air. I'm not sure there was necessarily a foul there, any kind of untoward pushing. But there definitely seems to be some kind of discussion as uh, Tobiachevich signals the score. So while that discussion was having, he was kind of walking away, so had his head turned to face the player, but it implied that he accepted um, that that was going to be a goal. Well. One of the beautiful things about broadcasting live and free on YouTube is that you can uh, you can scroll back yourself and get another look at our replays even when you're you're live on air. And it looked like from sort of watching that one back, Kat, that there's just a little bit of uh, aggressive movement in, not in an unfair way at all. Certainly, just um, really good boxing out from the receiver that kind of running towards the, the disc and then back again. But a timeout being called on the field. We will come back after this, folks. Don't go anywhere. Time. We are a group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the ultimate community. Like and subscribe, ultimate TV, the best in the world. Become a member and fund, fund our, our work, work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond.
a timeout. It's half time here in the pool stages at UK Nationals 2023. Highfield Sporting Complex once again. It's nice to be back as always. A couple of UK Nationals in a row and of course a wonderful tournament that was hosted by UK Ultimate a couple of weeks ago, the World Under 24 Championships. It's a slightly different affair this time. Club Ultimate in front of us and there was a little bit of breathing space given to Oxford Ultimate the end of that first half but what a d-roll from smog to cap yeah absolutely five points on the bounce uh that they were able to convert and score so you know it will be interesting to see if smog can maintain that defensive prowess in the second half well it has been all about their very intense match coverage there isn't really the wind conditions that you'd like to play zone but perhaps a change of the defensive strategy might be good to come out into the second half and catch Oxford on the back foot without saying that it does look like honest match defense easy find on the far sideline to Holden pick on the field suspiciously free is is a uh, how to go <laughs> so he will trot back to his matchup in the form of Edward Simpson. I say that. Is it? Is that a nine? Yes, yes, it is. It is. Whoa, he puts loads of pressure on foul call after that. Had too much momentum, just clips. How'd you go? Love to see the enthusiasm. Don't love to see the contact. How'd you go with a high release reset? The continuation of, on the break side flow is very good for the Oxford team. Yeah, they've just moved the disc across. We have both players catching the disc. It would appear simultaneously. I, I, that's how I saw it, Kat. Definitely looked at exactly the same time. And Play, uh, players looking for the opinions of the sideline. You also want to maybe check that disc. It looks a little bit tackled. Mm. Just the angle that both players were aggressive and took that disc into their own hands. Magico fires a low inside Blake to Hatsaw. Oh, that's a lovely break release on the backhand. Again, Simpson trying to put loads of pressure on it. Steps off a little bit. Oh, a soft overhead. The gentlest hammer I've ever seen on a live stream. And it's effective. Firing up again, that soft hammer, this time to Denalik. Feels like it's in slow motion, the release. Well, makes it a lot easier to catch, and there they unlock the gate to Oxford. Starting out this half on offense, they hold and put one in the piggy bank. They're going to have to do a lot more in this game to get themselves back on top, but that's a good start. Yeah, Oxford reutilised the space really nicely. They worked from the far side of the pitch to the middle to the near side, kept it on the near side. Um, but those those delightful hammers from How'd You Go um, just look so smooth. Uh, I don't think they'd quite hold up in the same way if it if the weather conditions were a bit different. Um, but lovely to see them, you know, take advantage of the break side uh, and put that in nicely to Hatsaw for the school. Well, a double hooter is heard around the sports complex here at Highfields, which indicates that the women's games have just reached their time cap. Of course, not the same case here in the mixed division. We have uh, one hour and 20 minutes to play. So full 80. But just letting you know that 50 minutes of this game has expired. So Oxford have half an hour or thereabouts to try and reclaim a lead in this game we've not seen them ahead since they took that first break of score to take us to 2-1 but that feels a long time ago they could be on the comeback train we'll see if they can uh, convert the defense they're about to put in 
Well, it was a real grindy affair to get that first break for Oxford. It took them three attempts. They did manage it, but Wayne House with a nice pull. It will just reach the centre as he ends over. Morrison. Both teams still going for match coverage. Oh, but there is the turnover generated by Webby. He really covered Tafkukaya Numa extremely well. Webby taking a different matchup this time. Morrison. Wayne House shaking his head away, grinding up line. Running out of options. Oh, is that a scuba? It is, but it's going to be taken by Edward Codd. And there's going to be a call on the plate. It's like Familton didn't think that there was enough separation for Codd to make that grab, but that scuba sank in a, in a way that invited a defensive play, I think. And we know Edward Codd's calibre. We know what he's capable of, and he's, he's got the height mismatch. So... Um, a, a disc like that that's going to hang, he is going to come and gobble that right up. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> Looks like the play will stand, though, after the discussion. I think that is fair. It was definitely a high stall situation again for Oxford. But that's going to be thrown directly at the floor. Do not pass go or collect £200. Giving Oxford a nice short to work with. Let's see if they can convert. Looking for options, Wayne House. He doesn't do too much mincing, does Wayne House. He just sort of commits to a space and tries to use other parts of his feet to spook his defender. But that's going to be just too far for Helen Brooks. The double coverage. Making yeah. things extra difficult. Wayne House seemed to be left a little bit alone uh, in the backfield there wasn't a direct reset so then he had two cuts coming at once uh, so it might be that there was a bit of miscommunication uh, traffic perhaps that clogged some of the space um, but Oxford give the disc back to Smog well that's a really lovely grab for Jarkoskaya Numa there's a lot of surname to pronounce but hopefully I'm doing it relatively correctly but it seems that Smog are losing a little bit of their structure coming out on offense to start. Pick further down the field. A little bit of traffic. I'm loving Yuma's aggressive fakes as well uh, to really throw off her mark. Going to reset. Easy one through to Blau. A little bit hesitant on those underneath passes. Oh, but that's quite the laser. I think it probably touched a couple of blades of grass and some dirt underneath it. The long arms of Eddie Codd can't pick that up. Immediate cut out of the palms. Webby underneath it, absolutely exceptional read amongst the pack and you can see the dismay on the face of Gigi Morrison. That is a break back for Oxford. Yeah, and credit to Webby, she had got the D earlier in the, in the point, so actually you could call that bookends technically for her. Um, but she is a fast player. I have to mark her in training for GB Mixed Masters and she uh, has a lot of talent. So uh, glad to see her making a name for herself on the stats board. Indeed, so Mixed Masters, of course, will be playing at Euros in Bologna in a couple of weeks' time. Just showing that uh, just because you've aged up into Masters don't, doesn't mean you have to run screaming from the uh, seniors division at the club level. But it's amazing to see so many players across this tournament are playing at club level and going on to play Masters as well. Indeed, well, and also plenty of under 24s representing. Certainly, Lemmings have got a very young squad, as well as many of the other clubs here. 
but that is the beauty of club ultimate competition in the seniors division it doesn't really matter what age you are there are no bounds no limits as the song goes and there's plentiful caliber and skill on display so webby to get us underway with the next pull it's going to go for a roller that will be just shy of center field to pick up long time smog player Been part of this outfit since their very first season but that's an adventurous disc from Eddie Codd it's going to require the layout and this time just coming up short is Lara Murray that disc was put out nicely into space though and Murray had some time had to adjust her position put her body uh, on the line for that disc um, but sadly it's just out of reach but really nice to see Smog utilising that space and isolating that player in the end zone Well I can understand why we've seen Lara Murray have some wonderful layouts on the far sideline just sort of in normal play to redeem some discs so she does have the vids but that one just goes a little bit too far oh the high grab inside scoop to Webby Casual dish that collects a little bit of traffic. I'll tell you what, if that's Hamilton again, I think it is. This, he's collecting quite a few fouls. Players just resetting to where they were, so Shona Carr's going to have to trot back underneath. All the female matching players downfield for Oxford save Webby. Slicer inside. Oh, great continuation. That's all has to turn on the quads to catch that one up. Oh, but look at that disc to show the car. Wow, the comeback train seems to be a trundering down the track. Yeah, that's the third point that Oxford have scored since this half. Uh, got two breaks now uh, on the bounce, actually. Um, but I think Blount flashed across that lane, but it, but uh, Hatsall made sure to catch. Had that lovely throw down to Carr. Uh, and she she read the play just some male matching player defense coming in so really good credit to her for keeping her eyes on that disc and going for it with two hands to make sure that Oxford get that score absolutely I'm really enjoying now the new found confidence for this Oxford ultimate side they have been uh, in the earlier stages certainly when there was that massive run of breaks for smog too there were so many moments where they just looked like they were playing a little bit hesitantly. They were getting trapped in the hand of space, but they are finding options downfield with a plum. And you could see the change in body language from Smog too. Uh, finding themselves a little bit unsettled here. That's a three nothing scoreline in the second half, Cat. What do you think has been, the, apart from the confidence added to Oxford, what do you think has been the difference maker? I think Oxford have looked a little bit more aggressive they've wanted that disc more yes there's been a couple more um, fouls perhaps from smog trying to do their best to get to make plays on that disc but i think oxford have just had that extra um, consistency amongst their players it's not that smog are doing anything are doing anything bad it's that oxford um, are are coming away with things more successfully i want to answer one of our questions in the chat yes we do look at our live chats um, to answer you, Ellen Philpott, the reason for the games being different lengths in the different divisions is to account for the different numbers of teams. So there are 12 teams in the open and the mixed divisions, so they get their full 80-minute games to play, whereas in the women's division they are playing 50-minute games because with a 10-team format they are playing a... Well, I, a I think it's two pools. It's a... Uh, uh, sort of more of a, a round robin e type of affair where they're going to try and get as many of the matchups to make it fairer but it's a difficult one to schedule as a 10 team tournament so they have more games to play so they're shorter as a result and of course the last time we saw women's teams in the uk going to a round robin format it was everyone beat everyone no team went undefeated so we'll see if anyone can cruise through those pool stages but of course We'll be bringing you two women's games later on today, but it's mixed for the morning. I think that might be our first bricks pool. 
Perhaps. I, no, I do be. think you're right, Kat. No round, We've had buddy, some that have no gone round. out of bounds, but it's usually been uh, better to take the position because of the where they've gone out of bounds. And that's a lovely grab from Lara Murray on the far sideline. Take a sit back. Just owning this point, that number six shirt. Arkle, a little flobble wobble. Perhaps got a piece of the disc to the mark. Arkle now grinding up on that soft backhand side. Oh, but that one's going to go way too far for Lara Murray. We saw her take that disc really high earlier in the point, and I think if the disc from Arkle had just had a bit more height on it, she would have had a bit more time to read it, go up high to make sure. But um, on this occasion, it was flat, it was fast, and just, uh, just too fast for her on this occasion. Well, a missed opportunity again for Smog 2 in this second half. They gave themselves quite the cushion. The five breaks to the better of Oxford, but they're starting to see their grasp on this game slip. But that is a proper negative yards all the way into Callahan County. Of course, Webby won't be phased by that, but there's the block by Ackley. If she'd caught that, that would have been quite the emphatic thing to celebrate. But it's nonetheless a goal line possession for Smog 2. Blount looking for options. Resets to Ackley easily. Pops it up in front. <laughs> Plenty of coverage on it. But this time, Alex Arkle is going to come down with the disc. And that's the first point in the second half for Smog 2. Yeah, interesting choice from Oxford there to go right to the back of the end zone, which obviously pinned Webby into a really difficult position. Um, Cackley took advantage of that, came in um, into the lane to make that throw harder, and, uh, and Webby absolutely launched it, which meant Cackley was able to get a hand to it. Um, wasn't able to catch it on that occasion, but it gave Smog that really short, uh, that short pitch to work with. And that disc is definitely, tef definitely tackled. She cackled it. Wonderful scenes in this mixed division game. Pool A, four pools of three. Double GT of Smoglets. That's it. Alex Arkle reeling in that score after giving it away with the disc that went past Lara Murray. But just shy of 13 minutes left of regulation play here at UK Nationals. Of course, we have the usual cap rules that we're used to. Two minute half time. Two team out. Two. two. in the reset space. It's going to be a soft one to car. So again, we get this uh, wonderful anderson car matchup. Two very well matched athletes. Back in action. Now to go trying to grind up line. Carr looking a little lost for options. Oh, there's huge pressure on that one, but somehow, some way, Torn Hatsaw claims the disc. Throws it away though, perhaps a little bit of conservation of greatness. Glass pool trotting towards the end zone, and that is a perfectly weighted backhand. The execution there. Chef's kiss. Yeah, spot on there from Declan Alves to recognise it. An unfortunate earlier chain of events for Oxford, that miscommunication on the on the uh, handler reset, that overshot, uh, and Isles and Glasspool in that great position to take advantage of the uh, isolation. Isles put that out beautifully into space and Glasspool was able to go and take the point for Smog. Yeah, we see on the replay, uh, How'd you go? I think thought there might have been a second player behind him to come and reel that disc in. Uh, Isles recognises Glasspool sets off as we've seen him do many a time before uh, and makes sure for Smog. 
So uh, Smog back in the lead, or sorry, still in the lead at uh, 10 6. But their wow. first, second point after, um, after half. And everyone loves a little bit of tram cam. Iconic here at the Highfield Sports Complex. Of course, there are no doggos allowed at Highfield, so we have to make do with uh, mechanical beings on the far side of this track. It's, it's quite funny, actually, to be fair. Whenever you play a tournament at, uh, at the Highfields Complex, one of the big safety things that you have to be cognizant of is the only access to the field site is over the tram line. So don't get squished by the tram. It's kind of the mantra of this tournament. But uh, And there's a little bit of history for you. Of course, wind farm stash <laughs> on the back of one of the photographers here for the tournament. That uh, Riverside sports complex that we loved playing at so much. It's, you know, it's completely sheltered, never has any wind or anything like that. But hoping to have a second wind here in the second half are Oxford. They managed to grab three on the bounce to start us off. The second stage is as they try and get their way ground back into this match. How'd you go? Looking for Wayne House who dances and grinds in front. Bit of a physical battle there, but the knee slide guitar hero style towards the front cone. Foul called, accepted uh, by Hart uh, just from that knee slide. So disc to, re to come in on stall zero. House seeking opportunities. I have to throw something a bit creative. No, just the easier round reset on the lefty. Kyo. And for how do you go? Nice bid clean from Simpson. Putting on plenty of pressure. Wayne House is going to drive, drive his way again to that front cone. Carr, though, is eventually found. A little bit too much movement around to deny the back pass from Simpson. Opens up the easy inside for the goal, and that will take us to 10 7. But how do you go? Didn't look flustered one bit in that section. I know that Simpson had just come across with the bid, kept it clean. Um, how do you go? Had a couple of options in the front corner of the end zone, something on the reset. Um, and as the reset came out, it just meant that there was uh, the nice, easy throw to come. So here we see how do you go, looking around at his options, Handler cuts up the line, next Handler looking at the front options, next Handler comes out and suddenly there's that space for the break throw to Carr. So 10-7 with 7 minutes and 32 seconds now left on the game clock. Yeah. This is a, a very different vibe to this second half, but I think there is a still plenty of gas in the tank for Smog 2. Of course, Mazen has reapplied his bobble hat. So I'm just there helping alongside. And Oxford go straight on to play Smog 1 after this. So both Smog contingents back to back, and then we'll see where, where they end up for the rest of the pool. Indeed. But I'm really liking the schedule here, actually. A lot of teams have back-to-back -back games, but there is a 25-minute gap to allow for teams to finish in the plus-one cap scenario. Of course, those of you who have been playing for a long time will remember cap two, where you added two to the highest score when the Hooter went. Which it's nice to see things that a little bit more well consolidated. As we see a potential second effort, no, that's going to bop out of the hand and out of bounds for Lara Murray. Rachel Hawes was hot on her heels there, putting that pressure on, and I think Lara Murray knew that, whether she knew how close Rachel was, I'm not sure, um, but, but it meant the disc went out of bounds, and Oxford now are in possession of the disc. Well, we've talked about the anderson car matchup being a lovely thing to watch, but that's a complete miscommunication. Tobiacevic not realising, I think, that uh, Hawes had gone off to the backspace, but another miss for Smog. Again, an overshot to Lara Murray. Um, you know, she again capitalised, wanted to make, uh, take advantage of the situation. Um, but yeah, just ever so slightly uh, ahead of her from Blount. So, so two fast pa first pass turnovers apiece. Brooks with it, finds Tobiacevic. Far side to Webby. A little bit late on the takeoff for the attack towards the deep space. Pause. Pause to Hawes there. 
Brooks with the inside that's going to be taken away by Carlo Connor Hill. It almost looked like he'd signaled something there, an injury perhaps. But yeah, that's exactly what I thought, um, but it would appear not. Maybe just keeping hands out the way in case another play was coming through on the disc. So Morrison. Oh, lovely find to Connor Hill. He's going to put a boost into the end zone that might run out of room. Yeah, too much time at the gym for Carlo Connor Hill. But a tasty break there from Gigi Morrison. We've seen her do it before and we'll see her do it again. Um, I think had that play maybe come off from um, the end zone line, that the throw from Carlo Connor Hill would have been in bounds, um, but unfortunately not on this occasion. A bit of a readjustment of the kit. Is there some readjustments on the field? Because this is turning into another of the turnover heavy points. Currently five turns each. Sorry, five turns total. <laughs> Nearly three turnovers each if Oxford let this another opportunity for a break slip through their fingers. Shot inside. Louis goes to Brooks, but that one just slips through the begloved hands. The extra friction doing nothing for her. Ackerley now. Connor Hill just grinding towards the front cone. Good attack on it. Keeps his feet in bounds. Cheeky casual disc. Just taking Tobiacevic for a bit of a walk. Foul near the disc. Lefty shot. Oh, and it's a almost seal like layout to seal the deal on the front corner. Some sort of call elsewhere, but again, walking away and signaling the goal. And Oxford trails still 11 7 now, the score with three minutes or just shy thereof to play. As Oxford had set up in their horizontal, uh, Katie Ackley had actually recognised she was going to be more advantageous poaching in the lane, um, which, although she didn't get the block, she definitely uh, put off some of the Oxford players' options. Um, so really nice to see that smart defensive look from her for this smog contingent. Um, and then Carla Gonahill doing some of the things we know he does best, landing on the floor gracefully, but disc in hand. It's nice to see Connor Hill back on the field. It's been a little bit of a, not quite retirement, but a hiatus from Frisbee. Perfect word to describe his brief absence. But great to see, still contributing to Smog's development and growth in the league. And there is a, a decent amount of experience on this sort of second team for Smog. They, of course, it's not the first time they've had a season where they've had two teams into quite a high level tournaments and we've seen them take two se two teams out to the world ultimate club championships before as well so great to see the depth uh, in that club uh, and in the north of the uk so oxford trying to keep the dream alive here that one just about reaches the hands of you how'd you go car up line makes the bid but unfortunately gets nothing but turf all over the shirt just readjusting the headbands after probably getting a little bit of a, a headbang on the floor not quite the perfect execution there but a great read from how'd you go there we have the time hooter expire not quite in line with our game clock but it would be fine enough that one flies past Elizabeth Colenso yeah, nice smag from Mitrak just before, um, but just a little bit too much zip on that one. Um, but I like the look, and the player was the player was open. So, so I think, irrespective of uh, the numbers on our screen, this is going to be time cap being applied after this point. So 
So either game to 12 or 13 here. Another soft overhead from How to Go. They really are quite exquisite. Denalik. Being called out of bounds by the sideline. I think that that foot was already on the line when she sort of tried to toe it, perhaps. Yeah, we don't have the best perspective up here. She was in, then went up, and I think the foot drag definitely uh, took her over the line. Well, great spirit to allow the perspective from the far sideline. Of course, it's difficult from our side of the pitch, a bit like if we were players ourselves, trying to make calls all this, all this way over. Oh, but that's a laser of a lefty backhand into the centre pocket. Boom. Big old poaches off in the back space, but doesn't choose to take him. Instead, oh, a visionary put through. No call on it. No denial. Just Oliver Gray all over that. What a beautiful choice of shot there. Just so much traffic in the middle. The reset wasn't on or they didn't feel comfortable to throw it. And the lead pass into the backfield. Plenty of time for Ollie Gray to go and get his wrap his hands around that disc well so it's going to be a another on the board for ollie gray catching that disc for number 16 but the throw was an absolute peach <laughs> that was ed simpson But a game to 13, Smog 2, 12, Oxford 7. Now we've seen Oxford go three on the bounce to start this second half cap. What do you think they're gonna have to do to do a similar damage this time? Because they need six to shut down Smog for six points. Yeah, we've seen them try a few different offensive looks. Um, obviously no zones because we as we've said the conditions kind of don't lend themselves to it um but i think just having that calm patience that they had at the start of the second half again you know being able to work it around the pitch you know using the break side the open side um perhaps some of those delicious hammers from how to go uh and other players of course uh to open up the space on the, on the pitch well, it all starts with a hold here for Oxford, if they can do it. How do you go? In centre field, anchoring, finds Webby on the far side. Our players trying for those big, deep shots. Mazza nearly snaffling the cookie out of the jar. Well, that is such a beautiful throw, but it's going to be taken out of contention by Albert Hart. Rapid movement. Wall of stature, but what a fantastically speedy athlete. Absolutely, never underestimate the athletes that are not as gifted in height, they have it in speed. Uh, another classic example, Avril Hunter. Uh, so, yeah, Albert Hart, do not underestimate him. And he absolutely made sure on that. Yes, he got a hand to it, but he ran the disc down, got in front of Hatzel to make sure uh, there was no play that could be made. As in taking his bobble half off during play as he raced towards that disc. Glass ball. Back to Mazen. Lefty dish in front. Oh, and that's a front cone battle that's going to be won by the offence. Webby has a go at keeping the game alive for Oxford, but that one goes to Smog. 13-7. Yeah, Smog just put it straight in down the line, very quick throws, made sure um, Webby did what she could, um, but the game goes to Smog. It was indeed. Well, all about that first half, I think, Cap, that five points of break, well, five breaks in a row, six on the bounce to take us from 2-2 all the way to 7-2. A great valiant effort from Oxford. I think they found a little bit more confidence, don't you? Yes, definitely. Um, and it would be great to see if they can take that through to the rest of the tournament. Well, I've been Hannah Pendlebury for catching. Congrats on your first ever commentary performance. You did a spectacular job. And our stats man, Andy, as well. We will see you on the other side, though. Don't go anywhere, folks. It's going to be Thundering Herd versus Nemesis. Mixed division continues here at UK Nationals 2023.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Yeah, ultimate. Alti.tv.